everyone. Happy Saturday. I can't believe it's Saturday already. I know. Weeks keep whipping by. How are you, Azure? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. Good. You know, I realized that um, here we are almost midnight, mid-month in October, and we haven't wished everybody a, a happy Family History Month. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. It's Family History Month. So. Yeah. I mean, every month is Family History Month on Wikitree, but <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the world is, is giving it a nod this month. So um, great to see everyone. 19 people with us. Vic Thor Rose was the first to arrive. So uh, and wishing us all a good time zone. <laughs> we got Melissa Clifford, Susie Carter with us. Murray from Canada is saying it's a beautiful day for a solar eclipse. I forgot That's about right. it. Yeah. That's happening and it's going to be kind of over where Eowyn, is, Eowyn and I are. Very about cool. 1030 or something like that, 903 or some some sometime around then. So yeah. Are you yeah. gonna are you gonna try and see it? I'm gonna try to look outside and see if I can see anything. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Um, and then we got Patricia Jackson, Chris Wine. Hi. Hi, Vicky from Chile. And Yoke, we're gonna look at one of your photos um, for photo of the month and I apologize in advance that I'm not going to be able to pronounce the names. I looked at those this morning. I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and hi, Teresa. And we've got Donna, Lisa, Mary Sleppy, and anyone else? Day Mellon the first in Wales. Wow. I, I don't know. Great that to have is. you. Yeah. Welcome. I mean, I've I was with the, I'm the Welsh dragon, so I feel like I should know you, but I don't. <laughs> Good morning, June and John from Ireland, Irish John, Hillary from Wales. Hi, Hillary. And Ellen Altenberg from Florida. Oh, um, yeah, there there we go. Vic Thor is saying it's 9.13 Pacific Daylight okay. Time, so it'll be 8.13 my time, which is okay. a few like 10 minutes. So I guess I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we see you going, we'll, we'll <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mahavlin and Chris Ferriolo. Excellent. Well, um, a, we got the memo, right? This morning? Yes. Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> this just came in the mail yesterday. I am so excited. That's awesome. Yeah. I love yeah. getting stuff in the mail. I know it's very cozy. I mean, it's gotten, it's in the fifties now here in Illinois. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I was 24 this morning when I woke up here. Oh yeah. So is that so normal? We're, or is that yeah. We're at, we're at 7,000 uh -huh. um, elevation. So yeah, it, it gets cold here. It's like a high desert. So it gets cold here um, at night. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, you got it. June is your twin. This All right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got a question of the week, um, which was any indigen indigenous people in your family tree? And there are just on the G2G post alone, there are 80 responses. And that's not that's even counting cool. responses on social media. Um, that was so, that's great. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um so we are going to take a look at that. Uh, of course, we, we can't look at every single response. They're, they're great. Um, I, wish, I wish we could read every response. Um, but um, I started from the front and Azure started from the, the end of the post. Um, and we looked, at, looked for ones to highlight. So... Um, uh, she I don't see Shelly in the chat. Shelly's usually with us, although um, I think maybe maybe coming in a little later. Um, but uh, Shelly had a family story that her third great grandmother, Mary Sutton Nevels, was Cherokee, and her nickname in the family was Injun Mary. Oh. Um, she thought she thinks probably no more than one eighth Cherokee with Welsh on her father's side. Oh. Um, 
And on her mother's side, the rumor is that she was related to Chief Benji. Hmm. That would be intriguing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Christine Miller uh, has, has four indigenous um, living people in the family tree because her um, cousin's son married someone who's from First Nation person in Canada and they have three daughters. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, Nancy Thomas um, says she's got ethnicity estimates. Well, just over 10%. Um, and, oh, and this was a really nice story about um, the power of DNA collaboration and our Adoption Angels project here on Wikitree. So um, the DNA result was how she discovered that the man on her birth certificate was um, either adopted or not my biological father. Um, and somebody in Adoption Angels on Wikitree helped her use her DNA matches from four companies to find the couple that is most probably her, certainly her paternal grandparents, um, which um, one, her grandmother was 50% Ojibwe or Chippewa. Um, and she needs someone to take a DNA, someone on the maternal side, her maternal grandmother's side to take a DNA test for her to solidify things. So I hope that works out for you, Nancy. Um, that, that would be so satisfying to know. Um, oh, we have a photo uh, from, of course, Alexis Nelson, who is always so great about sharing photos. Um, this is her daughter-in-law, who is Cherokee, um, standing in front of the only remaining sod house in Oklahoma. So um, it looks, doesn't it look like it's in a museum? What do you think, Azure? Does it look yeah, like it looks like it's inside a build building? Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, that is really interesting. Thanks so much, Alexis, for sharing that picture. Yes, we love we love pictures. Um, and you want to you want to do some from the the page four? Sure. Yeah. Let me. I'll stop sharing. Bring there. that up here. Well, Murray is in the chat and he shared uh, quite a, let's see if I can find it here. I had it up. Here we go. This is it. Yeah, here we go. He's talking about um, different uh, tribes and I am not going to attempt to <laughs> pronounce all of these different ones. I would murder them probably. <laughs> So um, he has a great post out there. Go check that out. Um, so he has two of the lines that have been confirmed with uh, mtDNA, haplogroups. And he just really explains more in detail about that, how that was done and where the ma other matches are and Mm -hmm. really really great information to share yeah murray murray is great with dna yeah so love seeing all of these wonderful responses um we had one on page three i wanted to show real quick here so we have uh martin west talking about that he has a new zealand maori is it maori and then he has uh, tr different tribes from East Cape, South Africa, and North Province, South Africa. So from different uh, countries even. So just really very interesting, all the different indigenous tribes and peoples that are talked about and all the different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. posts by everyone. We really appreciate everyone answering, taking the time to answer and share their yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's really wonderful that um, we're we're being very specific now, um, you know, with with not just the American Native Americans, but First Peoples in Canada and Indigenous people in in Australia and in Taiwan. 
um, there's a distinction between um, those who are ethnically Chinese and right. those who are are um, native native tribes, um, and um, it's it's very very interesting. I I haven't found any of those indigenous um, Taiwanese people in my tree, but I I would be excited if I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's like our family, you know, like most family, American families, there's always uh, the, the story or folklore sure. that there's, um, you know, Native American ancestry. Yeah. And so um, we, you know, the story was that it was my grand, my maternal grandfather's line. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, <laughs> it's like, there's a little tiny bit of DNA showing Native American ancestry. And yeah. it's got to be way further back than that. So what is the percentage? It's like 1% on my mom's DNA. Okay. Test. So okay. it's very, very small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm more than mine. I have zero, <laughs> zero. So, um, so it's just like, you know, but that's the, the difference between the, the story from the fan that gets passed down to the family yeah. versus, you know, actual, because we, I haven't even found any paper evidence of that, you know, you know, no evidence besides the right. story. So, right. Well, I mean, I see people in, in the responses to the post talking about an ancestor's name appearing on the Indian rolls. Yeah. I mean, that would be like, the, that the, would be it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like we said, there there's 80 wonderful answers here that we, we can't, we would spend the whole live cast double. <laughs> um, and um, so, so have, have a look, have a read of both things. Um, so just some, some very interesting stories there. Yeah, definitely go out and upvote uh, for everybody because they, they took the time to provide that information for us and sharing mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. also there's a lot of information that you may learn something that will help you with your research. Mm -hmm. um, Debbie, Deb Cavell talks about um, her family, four grandparents with indigenous an ancestry. And she, you know, there's links out here to the profiles and even here is one of the names. Really interesting. I would never, not even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> well, it, it means she remembers. <laughs> oh, so that's, that's really, yeah. Oh, here we go. Shay, she, Shay, yeah, Rosh. I don't know. She, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <wa. laughs> Okay. I, yeah. So yeah. there's some really interesting posts out there. Definitely. Uh, go check those out, everybody. Wow. And the the um, what alphabet is that? I mean, I'm just thinking of all our conversations with the the 15 Nations yes. project and alphabets and and how to have the last names and and all of that. Right. Right. Yeah. Very oh, that's interesting. Cool. Yeah. Thank Thank you for for sharing that, Deb. Huh. Well, <laughs> um, do we have something to say about Australia? Australia. I washed up the mug just special for this morning. <laughs> yes, we have the profiles of the week. This week are which Australian convict are you most closely connected to? So uh, this is to commemorate the anniversary of the Australian, the last Australian convict ship to set sail. Mm. And so we're looking at the most notable and notorious passengers. Mm. Okay. All right. So we have the first one. Um, the profile focus is Francis Howard Greenway, and he was uh, an Australian architect. So th on his profile, it's really gra a great profile. Somebody did a lot of work on it. has the image of the ship that he was, um, that he arrived in Australia on, the General Hewitt, which is great. 
has even information about what he looked like in his height. That's kind of nice. Oh, that I always love that. And they have links to the different buildings that he was the architect on. And here's, there's a $10 note that features him. Hmm. And we have some examples of his work. Hyde Park Barracks and the St. James Church in Sydney. Huh. So, you, for you and me, he is our farthest connection. Oh, really? 30, yeah, he, 30, he 30, only, 32 for me. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> he only has 63 connections. Really? So he he's connected, but it's like very little very little profile yeah. connected to him so and that would be great if we could get him i increased. know if anyone wants a project for the weekend yeah <laughs> up this guy's cc7 y'all yeah and he was an artist too um i let me take this off of reading mode so we can see some of his artwork is also attached to his profile that's really cool Nice. And I'm sorry, I missed that. Did he he have a wife and children? Oh, yes. Father of? So yep. there would be direct descendants. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And they have his brother and his uh, father on here. Right. Okay. And people in the chat are also saying that they're very far from him. Seems yeah. To, it seems to be a thing. Okay, so the next profile is Matthew James Everingham. This one is very interesting. Um, he is, his trial is on here, the, um, the actual transcription of the trial, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. And then there is a conspiracy theory around him, which I thought was interesting. Mm. So let me go down here real quick bottom so after his death um there was ru uh, rumors about the everingham millions so this was a uh kind of a conspiracy or a, a rumors around all this uh fortune that was happening back then after he died so that was really interesting. So they, they've got this outlined here. And in the research notes, they have information about the disputed parents. You know, we love research notes. Yep. And it's talking about um, who the possible parents might be. So research notes were what drew me to WikiTree. Yeah, just the collaboration that's happening with that. That, it, that just really shows a good spirit of community and collaboration, really. Yeah. Is it is that profile project managed? This one is. Let's see. Let me take it off of. Yeah. Project protected yeah. Uh, with the Australia project. Cool. Yeah. Very neat. Hmm. All right. Next profile is Joseph Holt, and he was born in Ireland. And he was a leader of the rebels of the 1798 Irish Rebellion. Mm. He was uh, tried in Wicklow and exiled to New South Wales. His family, uh, his wife and son, traveled with him um, aboard the Minerva. And he was a manager of a brush farm. And he was had gotten trouble again, uh, convict uprising, and then um, even after he returned to his farm, there was another episode: confiscation of an illicit still in 1806. Ah. <laughs> so, lots going on with him there, and he did eventually return to Ireland, and that's mm -hmm. where he died there in Dublin. Hmm. So, Don Loger. I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah. And he has a lot of a lot of connections. 2056, that's nice. 
Yeah. And a nice picture of him. Wow. There he is. Joseph Holt. Is that, oh, he's holding a sword. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it well, it looks like. See if, oh, Joseph Holt from RAH Glass Slide Collection, courtesy of RAHs. Hmm. It doesn't say. Yeah. But yeah, maybe maybe the hilt of a sword. Yeah. There. All right. And the next one is Joseph Belitho Johns. And he was, his nickname is Moondine Joe. Huh. So they have kind of a little rhyme here and a picture of him. There's another one up here. It looks like they've got lots to share about him. And they have his family. Um, doesn't look like the children have been added. I thought I saw that he had kids. Let's see. But they have some great images shared on the page mm -hmm. uh, with the bush ranger and here's some other good um snapshot of a newspaper article where he was on trial for horse stealing and escape <laughs> so he it seemed to be getting in trouble quite a bit they have more information here and they have a newspaper article uh, about another escape. So hmm. kind of an interesting guy there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it when there's newspaper coverage. Yes. Yeah. And lots of images. I love that, seeing the images of different ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So born in Cornwall and uh, died in Fremantle, Western Australia. Hmm. Okay, John Red Kelly is next. We have a lot of family members for him on here, uh, siblings and then children and his wife. Moy, Gla Moy Glass Church is where he was baptized. And they have an image of a plaque. I have a bad theory about why he's nicknamed Red. I hope I'm wrong. Is it something to do with blood? Let's see. We have his conduct transcript on here. So it has all the details about what he looked like. Mm. How old he was. Oh, hey, no, it's his hair. It's he's his got hair. His hair. hair. Right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> a ginger. Lots of great images again. And they have even the picture of the um, house on the farm at Beveridge. And of course, he was the father of Ned Kelly, which is another famous, uh, notable personage. What is his? Oh, I'm looking at the wallpaper. Those are shackles. Is that right? Uh, yeah, looks yeah. like it. Mm hmm. And he died of dropsy, hmm. edema dropsy from uh, heavy drinking. He was only 45 years old. Ooh. We're pretty young to. Absolutely. Hard life. Although, I mean, 19th century, I mean, you know, the medical yeah. treatment just wasn't there. Yeah. So from Ireland and died in Victoria. Mm -hmm. How many can. Oh, his connections are pretty healthy. Yeah. Yeah, 1773. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, though, look at his connections. <laughs> 54,805. What? And okay, he, he's my closest at 14, and he's your second closest at 20. And he's uh, oh, apparently. I, my... I'm sorry, vice versa. He's your oh. closest at 14, and my second closest at 20. He's apparently my sixth cousin, five times removed. Nice. 
probably the French Canadian lines on my dad's side. So uh, Joseph Petit Petit Jack Marco Little Jack. Little Jack. We need we need uh, Greg. We're missing <laughs> Greg and Meg. We miss, we miss so Meg. He was court martialed and sentenced to, sentenced to death uh, for high treason, but his sentence was commuted to deportation to Australia. And so he was the only Canadian exile not to return as he settled and stayed in Australia. Hmm. I wonder what the details of the high treason charge were. Yeah. So they have um, all 15 children. That must be part of the reason why he has such a high CC7 mm -hmm. connection count. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, another great profile that somebody's worked hard on. Yeah, I really like the 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 bolds on you know each part of the biography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and he was in Montana for a while. It looks like cool. So he he traveled quite a bit. So um, from. Canada and died in Australia, mm. 77 years old. Hmm. Okay, and another M Montana connection. This is Thomas Francis Meager, uh, born in Ireland and died in Montana Territory. He was the acting governor of the Montana ter Territory for a few years, it looks like. So he was the son of Waterford, um, Waterford's mayor. And he uh, got the nickname Mager of the Sword because of his fiery speeches. <laughs> he escaped in an open rowboat and spent four days at sea and was rescued by an American whaling ship and taken to San Francisco. Wow. So this, he got, I mean, so San Francisco, and then he made his way to New York. Mm -hmm. Lots, lots of traveling there. Central America, Nicaragua, Panama. He served in the Civil War. Brigadier General in the Company K 69th Regiment for New York Militia, Irish Brigade, and died in the summer of 1867 in Montana. I mean, that amount of traveling is just, it's its significant at that time. It really is. Travel really was super difficult. Is. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like, um, and under the legacy section, it's noting that he tra even traveled to France in 1848 hmm. as a delegate of the young, for the young Irelanders and returned with a gift from the French, hmm. the first Irish tricolor flag. Oh. So really interesting. Yeah. And Mager, Mager County, Montana is named in his honor. Huh. So a really interesting profile there. Yeah. And he has 1132 connections. It's very healthy. And another great picture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I like I like the um, the boxes the you know that show the succession who who came before yeah. him who came after him. Yeah, yeah. Kind of so you know what the right. history of that was. Right. Yeah. Okay. The next one is Kevin Izod Odorty. Odorty. Two hundred thirty six connections for him. And uh, also from Ireland and died in Queensland, Australia. So he was an Irish political dissident and was convicted after a third trial and sent to Australia. He was pardoned later um, and returned to Europe where he served in Parliament. And then he went back to Australia and served both Houses of Parliament in Queensland. 
So they have the newspaper article clipping here. Which is great. Again, another great profile. Great job. <laughs> he received a pardon, looks like. He graduated as a fellow of the Royal, Royal College of Surgeons in 1857. And was one of the first presidents of the Queen, Queensland Medical Society. Died at his home in Torwood, Brisbane. Hmm. All right. So next we have Mary Haydock Raby. Raby. She has two thousand three hundred and twenty-four connections. Hmm. And she was uh, transported to Australia as a convict, but became a successful businesswoman in Sydney, uh, importing in mercantile business, it looks like. Hmm. Horse theft is what she was uh, convicted of. So she arrived in Sydney in the Royal Admiral in October of 1792 and was assigned as a nurse pay, nursemaid in the household of Major Francis Gross. Hmm. So it looks like during the great Hawkesbury floods of 1806, her husband saved the lives of several people, but he died. And yeah. Mary took on sole responsibility for the care of seven children and control of a number of businesses. And that's 1811. That's wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's very notable. Yeah. So she was said to be worth uh, 20,000 pounds in 1817. And by 1820 owned a thousand acres of land. And her, and her daughters, Celia and Eliza, left for England and then returned to Sydney the next year. Hmm. So very uh, successful businesswoman, well-traveled. She sounds very astute. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yep. Well, can we look at the picture? Yes. We love pictures. Yeah. There she is. Oh, wow. So it's like a painting. I see. Yeah. Of course, it would have to be at that era. Huh. So neat. 35. Yes, it is. She, she, does, she doesn't look like a business tycoon. She looks like grandma there, but. She doesn't look like she's a horse theft. You can I, see I, either. <laughs> I, always, I always have to wonder, you know, with horse yeah. theft. Car theft. Where, where are you trying to go? <laughs> where do you need to get to? What's the story behind that? Exactly. Yeah, there's got to be a story for sure. Okay, James Roos, uh, 1759 to 1837, Cornwall to North New South Wales, and he has 2,830 connections. And he received the first grant issued in New South Wales hmm. and successfully farmed 30 acres, an experiment farm, proving that a new settler could feed and shelter his family with relatively little assistance to get started. So they have um, on here that he was a gardener, a farmer, and an overseer. And they have his information that he married Susan Susanna Norcott in South Petherwin, Cor Cornwall. And his name at the time was entered as James Roos, uh, with two O's instead of a U-S-E. So it's kind of interesting the different ways that his name was spelled over the time. I think, was, I think so many, so often the early spellings are just, fin it sounds like. Yeah, and that's exactly. Yeah. So um, it looks like he was convicted of the crime of burglarily. <laughs> I can't pronounce that word for some reason. What? So, tongue twister. Breaking and entering the dwelling house of Thomas Olive and stealing there out two silver watches and value of five pounds. Hmm. Uh, he was sentenced to death, but 
reprieve to transportation to Africa for seven years. He asked for a land grant, grant because his sentence had expire, expired, but the governor did not have a record of the comic's length of sentence, but he permitted Roos to occupy an acre of land near, near Parramatta. In 1791, he received the title for 30 acres of land, the first grant issued in New South Wales. He married Elizabeth Perry, and they had, looks like they had uh, five children. So quite a bit of information. And I have a little timeline there. Mm. Like. He was a witness in a court case. And they have the information there from the newspaper article. So really a, a lot of information about his, his life. Um, and then some research notes. Yay. <laughs> and I think there was a picture. Let's go look, see. Yep. I think this is gravestone. Oh, uh, okay. And it looks like it's kind of in a covered area. Yeah. I've never seen one mounted. Well, well I'm looking at the one next to it, but. Oh, I yeah. I think maybe. I think it's a transcription of what is on the actual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's a transcription of what's on see. the tombstone. That's cool. Yep. yep. Oh, and I forgot to mention back here. Uh, let's see, which one was it? It was, I think it was, or maybe it's one we haven't done yet. Maybe it was this one. Okay. We have William O'Brien Smith. Mm -hmm. So O'Brien is his dad's name and Smith is his mom's um, maiden name. So some point he took on his mom's maiden name as his last name. Mm. So he was born in Ireland and died in Wales. So he's a second son of Edward and Charlotte. And he took the name Smith in 1809 in order to inherit his maternal grandfather's fortune, including uh, a house and estate in County Limerick. Hmm. And he had five children with Lucy Gabbett. And he was an Irish politician, a member of par parliament for Ennis and County Limerick. He was transported to Van Diemen's Land, Australia because he was supported the Young Ireland Rebellion of 1848. Hmm. He had uh, a couple of children who were Ill illegitimate in addition to the five that he had with his wife, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Convicted of high treason um, because of the rebellion and then um, it was commuted to transportation. Mm -hmm. He spent several years in Tasmania and 1854 was permitted to return to Europe and received a part, pardon in 1856. Oh. I mean, I think it's it's nice to be pardoned, but I would also feel like, oh, you know, like I, I had to serve the sentence anyway. <laughs> would be a little frustrating. Yeah. Another great image here. Yeah. Is that a, like a lithograph? Smith O'Brien, the Irish Patriot. It's great. There was one of them. I think it, I think this is it. One of them was from the wiki tree challenge from before. Oh, uh, let me just, nope, not him. I meant to point that out at the beginning, but I forgot. Sorry about that. Everybody. <laughs> Let's see. Wiki tree challenge. Nope, I can't remember now. But one of them is from the WikiTree Challenge. So anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, I think we missed James Squire. Yeah. So yeah. James Squire, a.k.a. Squires. Born in England and died in Australia. Let's 
He had three wives and 11 children. He married Mar Martha Quinton. Looks like he had, that was his uh, first wife. He was arrested for having stolen six fowls and tried uh, in 1785. And then he was charged with highway, highway robbery and sentenced to seven years transportation. Huh. And then he ha here they have uh, an article about his death from the Sydney Gazette. Oh, this is the one. <laughs> I knew oh. there was one. So James was nominated by a uh, uh, SAG member to be part of the Wiki Tree and SAG 7 and 7 Challenge. Excellent. Society of Australian Genealogists. So that's it for the profiles of the week. Wow. I, I love looking at the profiles every week. I get so many good ideas because, you know, everybody has a different style for creating for, you know, all how the, they do the layout and all that. Yeah. The touches on the profiles and I get so many good ideas. Yeah. So, um, we have a question from Chris Azure. Oh, okay. How do you get those relations on the top of your pages? So I think that that's part of the WikiTree browser extension, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a setting when you go in there. Uh, let's see. Options. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I always click that one instead of the one I want. The WikiTree browser extension. Uh -huh. Here we go. Profile. Distance and relationship. So right here, so the pro profile tab in the Wikitree browser extension, and then distance and relationship is turned on here. Oh, I guess I should show my screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. So I just clicked on um, the Wikitree browser extension up here in my uh, browser, and that pops up the options for the extension. If you click on the profile tab here and then go down here, distance and relationship. Mm -hmm. And Wikitree browser extension is just a, a free uh, extension that you can download and it just takes your Wikitree experience up. Up, yeah. Up, <laughs> up a level. Yeah. You know, I was going to ask you about something that I noticed on your view and I just noticed on my view for the family on the right hand side, which mm -hmm. I do. Too, it was all green, not pinks and blues. Why is this, that a recent change? Let's see. So I was in reading mode. So I think oh. that's probably, um, oh, maybe not. See, that's what I'm used to seeing is the blues and the... Huh. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. that. That is weird how it's changed Being, back to what it was. Right. So, I don't know. I don't know why it went. Maybe it was just a... Huh. I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know. I was wondering about the chat that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Browser extension quirkiness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all right. Well, we have two photos to okay. look at. Um, the uh, photo theme for this month is family. Perfect. And, yeah, it is perfect. Let's see. We looked at many of these last, last week, but here are our new ones. Uh, this is from Teresa Willis. I think Teresa is in the chat, I think. Um, and let's see, is this big enough for, no, it needs to be a little bigger. So this is her grandfather, uncle, and her grandmother's three brothers in the late 1940s. I love the hats, the pipe, the tie, the neckties. 
and just the, the Look at those neckties that those so wide. I know. <laughs> <So short. laughs> and the expression on their faces, the little boy is kind of kind of yeah. got a ja jaunty look. <laughs> That's great. I wonder I wonder where that was. Um anyway. Um and then this really interesting photo. Wow. I know. Check this one out. This is from, okay, this is Yoke's photo. Um, and this is, um, let's see, the only, f this is a photo of a celebration of her great grand uncle. I'm going to try. Casper van Wiedendal, Wiedendal, being employed by 25 years by the railroad company. It's the only photo I have of four of my ancestors. Um, so great grandparents, top row, third and fourth from the right. Uh, let's see. So I guess that's these two people, her great grandparents and two great grandmothers wow. sitting first and second from left sitting first and second from left. I just, it's just, it's an, it's wonderful. This photo. It is. That is what a treasure. I know. It looks like there's like a some kind of inscription, some sign com commemorating. Fast it's fascinating to look at everybody's like the clothing styles. Yeah. The that hairstyle. Hat. Yeah. The chip hat up there. The chipped hat where? Yeah. Uh up in the upper right hand corner. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's great. And these, let's see, when was, was there a date on, on when this photo was? Yo, can you tell us when the, what, when this was taken? I'm just wondering these babies, these two babies, when were, when were, who are they? And I suppose they might be gone by now too, but. 1890s maybe because of the. Yeah. Dresses, it looks like. Yep. Hmm. Very cool. Right. Yes. Thank you, Yoke. Keep those photos coming. We love them. Um, and let's see, we have a tip today. All right. And, yes. Um, let me go to that screen um, and maybe make this a little smaller. Oh, what? 1909. Oh, thank you, Yoke. Okay. So, the yeah. Those babies have, are no longer with us, but yeah, they might have made it into the the tw the twenty first century. Um, excellent. Okay, um, so I realized that with my idea, like it's your turn to share a tip, and which sort of coincides with October. It's perfect because October is the month of ha Hacktoberfest. Yes. When our community comes together and, and, um, and works on, you know, developing fixes and ways to do things better. So I really like that um, it lined up like that. So um, today's tip is brought to you by um, M. Cole. Um, and it's about using auto citations um, for online books in WorldCat. Um, so WorldCat, if you don't, if you don't already know about it, it's basically a place to go. It's like a card catalog for the world. So instead of going to your local library and seeing what they have right there in that physical brick and mortar um, building, it allows you to search for a book um, or really any sort of resource anywhere in the world. Yeah. It's not a place to look at things online like Google Books or Internet Archive, but you might be able to access something through interlibrary loan or um, I haven't used it extensively. Have you as? Oh, yeah. You I have. Go there. Yeah. And like she's saying, that's what I do is I um, go there to get the citation. What yes. the citation would look like. Yeah. Um, because when I'm adding um, sources to the source library. Right. I if I right. find a free online book on Internet Archive or Happy Trust or yeah. Google Books and I create the free space page for it, mm -hmm. I like to go there to get a good um, yep. 
full source citation about the, the date and all that kind of stuff. All exactly. And so here's how you do it. Um, so this is a book that I'm using for a profile I'm doing right now. You go to the little quotation marks. Are, are you seeing my pop-up? I hope. Yep. It's good. Yep. Okay. Um, and I'll make this a little bigger. Um, and you know, Wikitree prefers Chicago style. Um, but if you wanted to do it, the citation in a different style, you could select that from the drop down menu. And there it is. Just copy and um, actually, you can, you don't even have to highlight. I have a button for you and everything. <laughs> I know. I mean, I think the only thing that I could possibly add would be like a page, the page number. Yeah. And maybe the, um, the date I accessed it. And yeah. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I was playing around with it a little bit more, um, yeah, just, just go to worldcat.org and you can make a, a profile um, and it'll show you all the things it can do. And I also noticed that there was a big, a big pitch. Where is it? There was something about genealogy. And, and yeah, I think it was there. I, it, it was there. Scroll back down a little bit. You'll see. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yep. So for, for us, yes. Uh, you know, it, it, it gives an idea of how you can use it. Yep. So. And that, and I have used it for doing an interlibrary loan for mm -hmm. books that are, I haven't been able to find mm -hmm. on the internet archive. I am able to see where the closest one is and right. yeah, it works great for that. Right. Right. So yeah, add that to your toolbox. And, um, and thank you. Thank you for the tip. Em. I really appreciate it. That's All great. right. Yeah. Um, and some ancestors to celebrate. Um, so we have two ancestors to celebrate today. Um, one are the uh, second great grandparents of Pat Miller. George Miller and Margaret Ferriage. Um, and they are one of her, her most challenging dual brick wall. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so she, she does have, I'm going to go over to the, the profile. Um, she does have, is this too big or is it the right size? No, it looks good. Okay. Um, there's the marriage, marriage record between these two. Nice. Yeah, which is great to have. They they both had made their way over to Ontario, Canada, Tor Toronto, and this was um, eighteen thirty um, October twenty fifth, eighteen thirty two. Um, but it's just not sure where they came from prior right. to that marriage happening. Right. Um, Pat believes that um, Margaret came from Scotland, and that um, George had had been in Poughkeepsie, New York before settling in Toronto. Um, but it's, it's just not clear. And I thought that this was so, um, Pat did a great job of like with the research notes and, um, you know, highlighting misperceptions, errors. Um, and I thought this was really interesting. Was her name really Farriage? <laughs> it appears on a marriage record that includes the word marriage and carriage because George was a carriage maker. Wow. Uh huh. So could a clerk have written the wrong name by accident? Maybe. Yeah. So very yeah. interesting. Exactly. So if you have any information or ideas, please contact Pat Miller, profile manager. It is, oh, it's got the uh, one of the um, coveted one profile IDs, Farriage <laughs> One. So have a look at that. And um, well, even though we don't know exactly where they were from before they got married, happy anniversary to Margaret and George. Um, and our second ancestor to celebrate um, is Georgia Halstead Sagarty. Um, and she, she passed away in October, October 2nd, 1946. Um, so this was Christine Miller's uh, second great-grandmother. 
Um, Georgia stood up in court in 1917 and told of her years of abuse by her husband, the father of her three children. As a result, the judge granted her petition for divorce. Mm -hmm. Around the same time, her daughter dumped her children at Georgia's doorstep. Georgia took them in and raised them. My grandma Jean was about around four years old when my, her mom left her there. She also, she also became a comforting influence in my mom's life. Mom has vivid memories of Georgia, despite being only six when Georgia passed away. I so admire grandma Georgia for standing up for herself and for raising my grandma. I wish I could be just like her. So, um, and there's um, just a really beautiful uh, biography that Christine wrote there. Um, and there is a bigger shot. Um, this is Georgia, who's the one who's seated. That's with. a nice picture. It sure is. Yeah. Great grandma Effie Doris Luella Halstead Sagardy. So, yeah, really, really nice. So, thank you, Christine, for sharing that with us. So, I, th I think that's all I've got. Okay. Two, two photos, two ancestors, and a tip. <laughs> all right. Well, so I'll share. Um, we are counting down to wiki tree day so to uh kind of celebrate that we are doing a post every day a broadcast at 12 45 p.m eastern daylight time it's only about five minutes long and we just are doing a drawing from the previous day's responses to the daily question so just if you had wondered how you can respond to the question. You can respond uh, anywhere out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Mastodon. And so on the YouTube video also is where you can respond. So right here, can you see that? Let me go in a little bit more here. So right under where the description of the video is you can see it has says five comments and then it has a place right here for you to say you can respond to the post and that will count for the drawing for the day and then you just click comment and that will post your comment to this video so i'm going to drop into the chat the playlist for all of the uh, broadcasts. So it'll have all the past broadcasts and then the future ones going forward. So yesterday's post was the 20 days one. So if you want to go on out and answer that post with who your, um, if you have a favorite paternal an um, ancestor, then we, you'll be entered into the drawing that we're going to be doing later this morning. So I just wanted to share that briefly. And then we have the post um, that Aon does for us every month out on G2G. And that is what is happening around Wikitree in October, 2023. And you'll see there's a lot happening. Yeah. So, Today is the 14th, and we have uh, the Saturday Sourcing Sprint going on. And, of course, right now we're doing the Saturday Roundup. And Monday, tune in. We're going to be doing the Wikitree Tours, and we're talking about Wikitree Day and Symposium and all about it. So that will be a, a fun one. The Data Doctors Challenge, of course, starts on Monday. And on uh, the 19th, next week, we have... Hacktoberfest, another YouTube broadcast where they talk about what they're working on and chat about all of that. So that's going to be the third week of that Hacktoberfest. Mm -hmm. I just just caught up with the last one. There, it's really fascinating, and it's it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I saw you were the winner of the drawing. And <laughs> I cheered out loud for you. <laughs> 
So, and um, let's see, we have, and then next weekend, so right now, this weekend, we have the weekend chat going on, of course, in G2G, and then again, it'll happen next weekend, and next weekend, again, we have the Saturday Roundup, and I believe that Mags and Greg will be back, but you're going to yeah. be gone, right? But next I'm going to be gone. Yeah, next weekend. <laughs> and then we'll be back to 20. Music, so. Musical chairs on Saturday I, I know, I know. <laughs> So that's what's happening in the upcoming week. Uh, of course, we have the social media page uh, out here for you, which is also kind of showing uh, what's happening, but it's got all of the links that we have um, for um, the posts out on the Wikitree official social media channels. And coming up next week is the... Oh, sorry. This is the wrong week. <laughs> there, the Central Georgia uh, Wiki Tree Challenge isn't until the following week. There's too much happening this month. <laughs> well, it's only going to crescendo until Wiki Tree Day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, like I said, there's going to be the Wiki Tree tours on Monday. Uh, the one name study coming up next week is going to be Kinghorn. So you'll be able to click on these links um, on those days and share out to your social media if you'd like. Uh, last week we had Stonington, Connecticut, I believe it was. And this week we're having Stonington, Maine in the One Play Study Showcase. Oh. Oh. And here's a link to the Hacktoberfest broadcast. And the G2G link will be there. And next week we'll also, I believe we'll be having Friday date night. And then the link for next week's roundup. And then also on this page, you can find the links for the 12 photos and the celebrate your ancestors and the 52 ancestors when it's out there. So go check that out if you want. Yes. And just since you just mentioned 52 ancestors, um, to clarify, there were some questions coming up in the chat about um was celebrate your ancestor was that the same as 52 ancestors and it's not it's it's a separate thing where i do a post each month uh and um so if you follow i'm going to put this in the chat um follow the tag of saturday roundup so just saturday underscore roundup um you will you will get my weekly g2g post about what's happening in the upcoming uh, live cast, and it will always have the links to where to put your photo, where to put your ancestor, and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's here's the tag. If you click on that, it opens it up to see. If you can see, yeah, that brings up all the live cast, all all the roundup live casts. I do and it every Sunday night. So. Yeah, so definitely follow that tag out there. So that's all we have, I think. Yeah. Oh, did we mention, did we mention rock that rock oh. is on, ongoing? We've got oh, rock five. is ongoing. Yes, it is. It is ongoing. We are rocking five people. Uh, let's see. Stephanie Hill, Rhonda Hill, no relation that we know of yet. <laughs> Christine Daniels, Susanna Yarver and anonymous Sharky. And, um, We've got a team of, I think, almost 60 rockers who are working away on their lines. Wonderful. Uh, and that includes a, um, we're having a 12-hour rock research party on Zoom on Thursday. So um, the, the, uh, I'll be reminding everybody about that, the, uh, the link for that. So, great. Yeah. That's great. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. It was so great to see you and everyone watching afterwards, too. And tune in again, same channel on YouTube for the drawing and question, 1245 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We'll see you all later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.